everyone, it's Lisa from My Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Now, for today's soap, it's, it's kind of a slightly odd one, I guess, because it's not a soap that I would typically be interested in making, but I've had quite a few requests for this type of soap, um, both from people um, asking me on my YouTube channel and also for people asking um, on my website for things like tools and that to help make this type of soap. So I'm going to be making a unicorn soap. Now, I said just a minute ago, this is not the type of soap that I would normally make. And the reason for that is because I tend to find unicorn soaps a really impractical type of soap. And they have a couple of things about them that for me personally, I know a lot of people love them, so please don't be offended if you love this aspect of them. For me, I, I dislike the idea of like the big horns and the ears sticking out of the soap. Firstly, if you sell your soaps, that's going to be a nightmare um, to ship without those getting broken, without huge amounts of packaging. And also I think about <laughs> the precariousness there of sort of washing with your spiky old unicorn soap, often as well as they often have like a lot of fairly spiky piping on them as well. So that's my first um, thing that I personally just don't um, find appealing about them. The second thing is the unicorn eyes. Um, we know with the unicorns, they're always done with sort of like a closed eye with some quite pretty eyelashes. And again, typically with these types of soaps, you see people either drawing them on with some mica painting, piping them on on the top, or maybe just stamping into the surface of the soap and filling those in. And as I'm sure you know, um, if you've watched any of my videos, um, for me, I dislike things that don't go all the way through the soap. I don't like the idea of having a soap, washing with it once or twice, and then you've got a unicorn with no eyes. So these are the problems that I've tried to solve. So obviously I'm gonna end up with a, a, a sort of standard bar of soap, a tall and skinny bar of soap, but the unicorn is gonna be fully incorporated within the soap. So it is an oblong, bar of soap and all of the features, the horns, the ears, the flowery decorations through um, the horses, sorry the horses, the unicorn's forelock um, will actually stay through the soap and so will the unicorn's um, eyelashes. Come on, let's go and make some soap. The first thing I'm going to do is roll out some brown soap dough to make the unicorn eyelashes. Now I know typically you might see these in black, but I don't have a black available to me in this assessment, so the closest I can get is a brown, which is fine. Now I've actually been designing some uh, um, extruded discs to make unicorn eyelashes that are going to go into the shop, and I've got three left on my shortlist, so I'm just going to test these ones out, just to see which give the best effect. So I'm going to start off with the disc that makes the eyelashes flick up and I'm using the skinnier version because that should actually give me a little bit more detail but I'm not really sure how well it's going to extrude. Actually that one has extruded really nicely, it hasn't torn up the design at all, it's come out of the extruder nicely and then when we do a little cut through it we can see that it's got a lovely crisp design. And then I'll just repeat that process for the other two discs. So I've got the fatter version of the flicky up eyelashes and then my version of the eyelashes that go downwards. And from seeing these, I like the original flicky up eyelashes that I did, but I also like these ones that go downwards, the ones I've just tapped with my finger. So those are the ones I'm going to put in the kit. 
The mix, I've just taken a little flower extruder disc and I'm just going to extrude some more brightly coloured strips of soap dough. And these are going to be like the little sort of flowers and bright bit that you get going through the unicorn's mane and the forelock that you see coming down between its ears. As I've extruded each piece, I'm going to give it a gentle roll just to sort of straighten it out a little bit and then trim it to the right size. I then also extruded some stars in gold and I did two sizes of these, a larger one and a smaller one. And then I've just left all of my embeds just to firm up for a few hours before I use them in my soap. I'm going to use the stars for embeds on the top of my soap, so I'm just going to take each strip of star and just slice them into thin slices. Now sometimes when you try and slice an extruded embed up into thin slices, you can squash it and distort it quite a bit, because remember these are just soap dough at the moment, although they're reasonably firm, they haven't fully set up and cured like normal soap would. So all I've got here is a small piece of rolled up kitchen roll, and I'm just using that to sort of balance it round the star, so I'm never pushing the points of the star onto the chopping board. And therefore I'm getting a nice clean star shape that I haven't got to bother about reshaping. It also helps to make sure that you can keep your knife nice and clean. So spraying with some rubbing alcohol every now and again will keep making sure that you can cut through the embeds easily. I'm going to be building this soap upside down in the mould, so the bottom is going to be the top of the soap. So I'm actually adding my little star embeds to the base of my soap mould, and then I'm going to pour the soap over the top of them. Now I'm not sure if you can see this, but I've actually drawn a line underneath down the middle of my soap mould, because that's a place that I want to keep away from with my stars. And I've added a little bit of distilled water just to dampen that soap mould a little bit and stick those little embeds to it. I am going to be using a scraper to make my unicorn's horn and that scraper is going to come quite near the top of the soap. So what I'm going to do just before I finish this part off is I'm going to rebuild my soap mould and then just check to make sure that I've got clearance between my scraper and all these little stars because otherwise if you start knocking them around after you've poured soap in it's going to make all sorts of mess. Now if you haven't got a soap mould that comes apart, it doesn't matter, you can still just pop your stars at the bottom of a normal soap mould, it doesn't really make any difference and you can still test to see if you've got proper clearance. And then once I'm happy I'm just going to finish this off by popping on some of those smaller stars just to fill in the gaps. And then once again I'll just put my mould back together and do one final check to make sure nothing's in the way of the scraper. And then I will leave these alone for a couple of hours just to make sure that those stars have really stuck down nicely so they're not going to float away when I pour soap on top of them. Now onto the main soap and I want to have a blue and pink background to my soap so I'm going to be using electric blue from You Make It Up and some neon pink from Mica Mama. And the fragrance I'm using is going to be Cranberry Relish from Nature's Garden. Now I know that sounds like quite a Christmassy scent, but I find it just a really nice sort of fruity type of scent without it being too sweet. So I've calculated and weighed out the amount of oils I need for this section and also my fragrance oil. Now I have found with this fragrance oil in the past that it can give sort of like fragrance spots in the soaps. It seems to be one of those fragrance oils that takes an awful lot of blending to make sure it disperses really well. So what I'm doing with it is I'm actually adding it to my oil up front so it can just get blended every single time the stick blender goes near the soap. 
and I'm actually going to give it a blend just with the fragrance oil and the soaping oils together to give that process a good start. And then as normal, I'll just add in my pre-measured lye solution with the sodium lactate and just bring that up to an emulsion. Now, although I need two colours for my background, I'm just going to pour off a little bit of purple. And this is Purple Passion by You Make It Up. And this will be some purple that I'm going to pipe a little bit later on. I'm quite happy to pour it off now, even though it's got the fragrance oil in it, because I know this fragrance oil doesn't accelerate my trace at all. So this isn't going to set up madly quickly before I'm ready for it. Then I'll just separate my batter between the blue and the pink that I want, give them a good stir in and a little blend just to make sure that everything is fully incorporated. And then for our in the pot swirl, so just pouring some of the blue into the pink and letting it go quite deep down into the jug. Then I will give that a gentle swirl. And I always leave a little bit of my second colour out and sort of trace it on top of the batter so you don't end up with a, a whole load of one colour coming in and then the others. So just popping a little bit extra on the top so it doesn't sink is a good way of making sure that it's consistent throughout the pour. My little stars should be stuck down fairly well by now, but I am going to use a spatula just to break the force of that batter as it goes into the mould, so once again you've got less chance of disturbing those stars. And once that's all poured in, I'll just leave it to set up just to the point that it will hold a shape and therefore we can scrape it. So I've made a scraper set for our unicorn and I've actually done it in two pieces. And this is so that if you fancied it, you could always just use the ears separately for something else or combine the two together to get your unicorn with his unicorn horn. And I'm actually going to go in and just scrape the horn out on its own first rather than risk scraping out the horn and the ears because that's quite a lot of batter to remove in one go. I'm just going to do that horn first of all and then I'll go back and do the ears as well. Now because this is quite a big indentation in your soap, you are going to be pulling out a fair bit of excess soap batter, so make sure you have some little spare soap moulds and you can just pop these in and make individual soaps out of this excess. And then once the horn is done, I'm just going to go in and add the ears. I'm keeping the horn in the centre because I obviously I don't want the soap to collapse in on the bit that I've dragged out. So I'm now just going through and dragging through those ears to finish off the shape of the unicorn. Next I made up some gold soap batter and this is Golden Shimmer from Micah Mama. I made it up in exactly the same way, dispersing that fragrance oil in first and then I'm just literally pouring it into the horn and filling that right to the top. I'm going to need some white soap batter in two stages, firstly to fill in the ears and then to fill in the rest of the head of the unicorn. So to get consistent white, I'm going to mix my titanium dioxide straight into all of the oils that are going to be white. And then once again, I will then just make the rest of the soap batter up in the normal way.
So I've just taken a little bit of that oil that's coloured with the titanium dioxide and made a very small amount of soap batter up. That's what I'm going to use to fill in the ears of the unicorn. And then with the little bit of white that I've got left over, I'm just going to add a tiny touch of the neon pink to it. And I'm going to use that to make the little pink bits that you have inside the ears. now my purple soap has set up quite nicely so I'm just going to pop that into a small piping bag that I've put over a glass to help me fill it nice and easily. I've just popped a sort of standard star tip in here it doesn't really matter what type of tip you use but something a little bit spiky I think would be quite good. And then I'm going to use that to build up a V shape in between the ears. So I'm basically just going to stagger some layers of some purple piping. And then I'm going to bring in those flowery embeds that I made earlier. So we actually get that forelock that you have going down between the unicorn's ears with all the flowers and everything in it. And it will go all the way through the soap. So once that's all done, I'll mix up the rest of that white soap batter and I'm going to bring it to a trace that's not too thin. I actually want this to be thick enough to support the eyelashes when I put them in, but it needs to be thin enough to make sure it still flows between all those little nooks and crannies of the piping that we've done. And then in go the eyes, I chose the ones with the eyelashes going down for my soap. Make sure you put them in the right way because we're building this soap upside down, aren't we? Also, as you drop these in, there's a slight curve to the eyelash. So put them in at a bit of an angle so you make sure you can sort of scoop them into the soap so you don't get any air bubbles. If you just drop them on the top, you're likely to leave a sort of trench of air between the eyelashes and the soap. And then being very careful not to disturb those eyelashes, we can just gently pour the rest of that white soap on top and that will finish our soap off. Once that's all done, I'm going to cover my soap and then seat pop it as normal. So into an oven that's been preheated to 70 degrees C, that's about 160 degrees F. Turn the oven off as soon as the soap goes in and I'll leave it in there overnight. So here we are the next day and here's our unmoulded soap. I actually really like the way the stars are in the top, which was the bottom of this loaf. I like the way that even though they're embeds, they're nice and flat and level with the surface. 
The tools to make this soap will be available in the shop update that's happening on December the 1st at 6pm UK time. So just check what time that is for you. It's typically round about midday-ish if you're in the US. This soap will actually be in the update after that, but there are lots of soaps that you've already seen and new tools and things in the update that's coming up on December the 1st. So here are our little unicorns and I think they actually do what I was trying to set out to achieve. I've still got a unicorn soap but I've got it in a nice practical format in a bar that can be shipped and obviously be packaged and is actually quite user friendly to actually use. You could obviously change up the eyelashes, you could change up the flowers and things in the unicorn's forelock or maybe even add something to the bottom of the soap. And then I'll just leave you with some final pictures of the soap. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the soap. If you have, it would be great if you left me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see what I'm doing in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? And if you've got any questions or comments, then leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!